Hello friends, this video on p-block elements part 5 is brought to you by examfree.com. No more free from exam. Let's talk about electronegativity. So what is electronegativity? So electronegativity is nothing but a tendency to pull shared electron. It's just a pull, right? It's just a pull, not exact, uh, uh, what do you call, consuming the electron, just a pull actually. We, we talked about electronegativity here, right? So when we say that fluorine is more electronegative than let's suppose chlorine because Chlorine has more tendency to just pull, just a pull. Not the not I'm not, not talking about that the fluorine exactly uh, take out the electron from someone keeping uh, with himself. Just a pull, right? That is electronegativity. So if you have if you want to understand electronegativity in detail, please watch the atom chapter where we discussed about electronegativity. So as I'm assuming that you know this definition, so just uh, I'm uh, giving the definition now that uh, electronegativity is nothing but a tendency to pull a shared pair of electron towards itself and this also if you see it depends on the size of atom and the electron hungerness size of atom i mean say size and charge actually i can say atom size and charge that is the capability and the hungerness desire this is desire this is i like based on capability and desire so similar to Electron gain enthalpy has a similar train. If you go from here to here, so if you compare boron and let's suppose oxygen, oxygen has more hungerness for electron because the moment you uh, oxygen or let's compare uh, boron and fluorine, fluorine has more hungerness for electron because the moment fluorine gets one electron, it will become stable. So hungerness is more for fluorine. Also, the size is less for fluorine and charge is more for fluorine. So if you see all these three parameters, compare boron and fluorine, fluorine is pretty good. So if you compare boron and fluorine, so fluorine has almost four electronegativity and boron has almost two. Correct. Similarly, if you go down the group, if you see boron and let's suppose uh, we compared indium. So if you see compared to size, boron has better in size. Hungerness, both are same because both needs one electron and charge charge is i'm talking about the effective charge so the, because of the shielding effect by the orbitals this has more charge effective charge so in both the case boron stands so boron will have more electronegativity as compared to indium this is a general trend actually so if you go from here to here the electronegativity increase because the hungerness increase if you go up the group the again the electronegativity increase because the hungerness increase because of the effective charge Right? So if you go in a group, the hungerness is same actually, but the capability increase. Right? Now, if you see the neon and argon has almost zero electronegative uh, BT. Why? Because they are stable. They are happy in life and they are stable. They don't want extra electron in their life to make their life disastrous. So they are happy and they have zero electronegative. And this trend breaks in aluminium and silicon. If you see, the trend is that if you go down the group, it should decrease, but if you see here, it is increasing here. Similarly, if you see, it has to decrease, but again here as you see, it has increased. So if you see, these guys are trend breaker here. Here also will give the same logic. See, if you see here, in gallium, we have 3D orbitals and we have poor shielding. This is in gallium. Right? In gallium, we have 3D orbitals in poor shielding. So we have more effective charge. Right? So more effective charge means more capability. See, in, in, if you go down this group, the hungerness to get electron is same, right? Both the same. Because if you see in all these uh, nitrogen families, they all need three electrons to be stable. Here they all need two electrons to be stable. Here they all need one electron to be stable. Right? Here they all need four electrons to be stable. So that is hunger is the same. But if you go, if you compare aluminium and gallium now, gallium has got 3D orbitals that has poor shielding. So effective uh, nuclear charge on gallium is more as compared to aluminium. The same logic which we use, use for size, since the effective nuclear charge for gallium is more, the size also is, if you compare now size, let's suppose, let me change the color. So let's compare aluminium and gallium. So aluminium is this and gallium is small actually, right? So if you compare aluminium and gallium, based on size, 
This guy has advantage because gallium is less in size. 3D shielding effect. Effective nuclear charge, gallium is advantage. Gallium is more effective nuclear charge. So in both cases, gallium is better than aluminium. So gallium is more electronegative than aluminium. Same thing with germanium and silicon also. Correct. So if you see anything in chemistry has a logic behind it, right? So if you if you see the size is decreasing, there has to be a logic. If you see the electronegativity has some trend and there is some exception, there has to be a logic for the exception also. So in this case also we have seen for ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, electronegativity and size, we saw there is a logic for the variation. And hope you understand the trends of the electronegativity, ionization enthalpy, atomic size in the P block element. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.